Quit hanging around people that can't give you nothing. Now, I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about give you principles. Mm. They can give you things to build you. Yeah. They can give a key to unlock something in your life. My God. Yeah, real fool, Pastor Shannon. Real fool. Oh my God. Uh, Genesis 37, starting at verse 1. When you have it, please say amen. 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 Then, so Jacob settled, reading from the New Living. So Jacob settled again in the land of Canaan where he, his father had lived as a foreigner. This is the account of Jacob and his family. When Joseph was 17 years old, he often tended his father's flock. He worked for his half-brothers the son, and the sons of his father's wives, Bilhai and Zilpah. Uh, but Joseph reported to his father some of the bad things his brothers were doing. Verse 3, Jacob loved Joseph more than any of his other children because Joseph had been born to him in his old age. So one day, Jacob had a special gift made for Joseph, a beautiful robe that's very symbolic to the story, church. But his brothers hated Joseph. Oof. Did y'all catch that? Because their father loved him more than the rest of them. They couldn't say a kind word to him. One night, Joseph had a dream, and when he told his brothers about it, they hated him even more. Listen to this dream, he said. We were out in the field tying up bundles of grain. Suddenly, my bundle stood up, and your bundles all gathered around and bowed low before mine. Verse 8 says, his brothers responded, so you think? Uh, if you just listen, people will prophesy your future, and you don't even know. So you think you will be our king? They prophesied, uh, Minister Mill, right there. Not even knowing. They prophesied in this man's future. Don't just read the word. So you think that you will be our king, do you? Do you, act, do you actually think you will reign over us? My God. And they hated him all the more because of his dream. And the way he talked about it, them. Soon Joseph, and another, soon Joseph had another dream, and again he told his brothers about it. Listen, I have had another dream, he said. The sun, moon, and 11 stars bow low before me. Uh, Twelve. <laughs> the time, my God, this time he told the dream to his father as well as to his brothers, but his father scolded him. What kind of dream is that? He asked, will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow to the ground before you? Boy, they prophesying. But will, but while his brothers were jealous of Joseph, his father wondered what the dreams meant. I'm gonna go a little further, y'all. Soon after, his, soon after Joseph's brother went to pasture their father's, father's flocks at Shechem, when they had gone for some, been gone for some time, Joseph said, Jacob said to Joseph, "Your brothers are pasturing the sheep at Shechem. Get ready, and I will send you to them. I am ready to go." I didn't preach this sermon, and I mean this, 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 this text so many times, but God spoke to me last night. Get ready, and I will send you to them. I'm ready to go. Those two statements right there. This young 17-year-old shepherd boy, pastor, didn't know that life was going to be turned upside down. I'm ready. Let's go. Father, I thank you. Mm. Help me to birth this message. Take the word to the people and bring the people to the word. Speak, Lord, by your spirit. Teach with accuracy. Save and encourage. Bring us to that place in you, Lord Jesus. Well, don't nothing else matter but a yes down in our soul. We thank you for salvation today. Thank you for the privilege to do business in your kingdom. Thank you for the spirit of discipleship that's all over this church. Thank you for just the beginning and thank you for Brandy's courage, Father God, to push to be a testimony to advance your kingdom, Father God. Mm. Thank you that many more, Father God, we end up with pardons and it will be a testimony around the city. If you want to be pardoned, my God, show up and get discipled and go to going off for Christ church. And God will do a miracle in your life. So we thank you for the word. Stir me up, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of a holy God. Detours, detours are distractions, church. Get your pen and paper out because God is going to teach you. Detours are distractions from the original intended route. 
Mm. Let me say that again. Detours are distractions, church, from the original attended route that you have planned to take, that you have planned to take, that you have planned to take, that you have planned to take. The pre-planned route that we had determined to use to get, my God, where we hope to go. Detours typically are unexpected, y'all, and inconvenient. Somebody got to write that down. I'm going somewhere. Detours are unexpected and inconvenient. As believers in Jesus Christ, we have a destiny. Mm -hmm. From an internal perspective, we know what our destiny is. But to be in God's presence forever, that's what it is, our eternal destiny. But our focus here is on the present destiny, the one, my God, he has for us in this life. Basically, everyone, we know where we are going in the life to come. But where are you going in the life that we have today? God has a plan for your life and a purpose. Of course, we teach that. That's not foreign verbiage inside of going off for Christ church. God has a plan. God also has a purpose, and he created you with a purpose. God created your purpose, and then he went specifically and created you for your purpose. Yeah, that missed some of you. God created you yeah. with your purpose, and then he created you for your purpose. Yeah, I'm going to come over and say that again. God created your purpose, and then he created you for the purpose. That's why I don't let catch God by surprise. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yeah. See what I'm trying to say? He created you specifically. The late doctor calls it finding your spot. God has a spot for you in his kingdom. And can't nobody occupy your spot. That's why it's critical that you get to your spot. Are you listening to me? Uh, he desires for you, my God, to fulfill your, his plan and his purpose. His plan. Not yours, not mine. His plan and his purpose for your life. It's not just a job. God didn't call us just to get a job and collect a paycheck and pay bills and have fun on the weekend. We all come out of that lifestyle and we was miserable. Even though we had a little fun, we were still miserable at times. Yeah, yeah, well, it is, it is. There's a destination for you, and God rarely takes us to our destiny, church, with our detours. He rarely takes us from point A to point Z without causing us to make stops at P, X, and Q. <laughs> you just don't go in God's kingdom from A to Z, baby. My God, there are some detours along the way uh, to end up where God is taking you, my God. Mm. And so, my God, we're going to title this sermon, don't trip, it's just a detour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't trip, it's just a detour. And when I was sitting at the new campus, God began to speak, my God, to my spirit because I was sitting in my study and I made it. But I think about all, Pastor Champ, the detours that I had to take before I occupied 205 South Shirt. And so I just dropped by a few minutes I have just to encourage you that there's going to be detours. You should already prepare your mind for it. Many of you is already dealing with the detours. <laughs> uh, but if you don't understand the sovereignty and the providence of God, the things that God is using to stir you, my God, to your purpose and your destiny, my God, you're going to mishandle. And then you will arrive somewhere unprepared and not equipped. And then you will squander away <laughs> the very things that God had for you to bless you. Are y'all with me so far? So let's talk about this young fella uh, that I can identify with. He, Joseph was a 17-year-old man, and the things that he went through when he said, I'm ready to go, my God, he didn't realize that he was finna go into the fire, that his life was finna be completely disrupted. Can I just tell you this right here? You might want to write this down. I feel like teaching a little bit. God never called you and I to a normal life. You, you can't show me. When you're following God, if you're trying to live a normal life, uh, you will be very frustrated in this kingdom because God never called his sheep to a normal life. What is normal? What is normal? When God has called us to advance his kingdom, uh, there's a price that got to be paid uh, when you walk with God. So if you're looking for normal, that's probably why you're frustrated because you're, you're trying to live a normal life, but you can't find that in Scripture. Uh, God never, he called you and I, my God, to disrupt the world. Uh, yeah, come on, somebody. Uh, when, the, when the disciples came into a town, they said, here come these troublemakers. Ah, <laughs> uh, Pastor, I want to be known, Spark, as a troublemaker. I'm already known as that anyway. But I don't mind being known as a troublemaker because I can identify with the other apostles because they was known as trouble. Paul then was troublemakers, Barry. And when they showed up, my God, they just disrupted everything. When you show up, are you disrupting everything for the good? Yeah. 
I ain't talking about for the bad now. I'm talking about for the good. I ain't talking about coming in, my God, with a nasty attitude and, and you know what I'm saying, acting like a burnt black cat. I ain't talking about all that. I'm talking about with authority and the power of God, my God, will disrupt, my God, a demonic uh, environment. Come on, somebody. Uh, when you come over, my God, people start putting down their alcohol and putting down their cigarettes and putting out their weed and all of those type of stuff. Not because you are acting judgmental or better than nobody. It's just the power that you operate in. Oh, when you live, something demands respect. You ain't got to say nothing. Just live it. I promise you they'll respect you. Mm. So let's go with point number one, my God. Detours are a part of the trip. Please, church, understand. Don't shout and don't clap without getting revelation. The word of God will affect your personal life now. You ain't got to wait to have peace, joy, and victory when you get to heaven. The word of God is still true. I don't care what society is saying. I don't care what the secularism and postmodernism is saying. The word of God is still true and it's still, my God, apical and God is still fulfilling and executing his will, my God, from Genesis all the way to Revelation. All you got to do is trust the process, I promise you, and you will see, my God, the promises of God manifest in your life. But there's detours along the way. Look at your neighbor and say, don't trip, it's just a detour. Yeah, yeah, I give unconventional titles because you need to understand that. My God, if you don't remember nothing else, you're going to tell, oh, when you go home and you're going to look at it, you're going to say, don't trip, it's just a detour. <laughs> when your kids get the trip, you're going to be like, don't trip, it's just a detour. <laughs> Come on, somebody, even a supervisor on the job, money, you're going to be like, don't trip. Oh, you might not say nothing to them, you may say something in your mind, it's just a detour. Mm. But let's look at some people to encourage you, my God, that you're going to have detours, even as a great man and woman of God, even with a plan and God has a purpose for you, even though you're going to do great things and have have done great things, my God. We got great men of God that we can draw strength from because they had to go through some detours. Let's look at the first one. Let's look at Moses. Moses was on a detour in the wilderness for 40 years. Are you listening to me? Numbers 32, 13 says the Lord was angry with Israel and made them wander in the wilderness for 40 years until the entire generation had sinned in the Lord's sight had died. Now let me bring some context and some balance. You and I at this season, some of us, we got less days in front of us than we got behind us. And you ain't got time to be wondering. <laughs> you ain't got time to be making critical mistakes, my God. You ain't got time, my God, to be giving yourself and your time, talent, and treasure, my God, into the hog's pen, my God. Uh, you, you ain't got time to wonder. When you was 15, 16, or maybe 20, I give you the 25, uh, you might have wondered, my God. But when you hit 30 and 40, you ought to have a plan. You ought to have a purpose right now for your life. Some of you, my God, is grown with grandkids and you're still wondering. Some of y'all are grown, my God, and you Keep telling yourself it don't take all that, but you're wondering. You're going around in circles, and you ain't making no progress. Oh, they was wondering out of disobedience, my God. And so God had allowed them to wonder, my God. God allowed them to wonder, my God. So those that were disobedient, complaining with a nasty attitude, didn't want to submit, didn't want to surrender, he allowed them minister to die. He said, I'm tired of dealing with these hard-headed people, my God. And so I'm going to allow them to wonder. And because Moses was called to lead them, he had to deal with their consequences and their disobedience. So he had to wonder with the same people he was called to lead. It wasn't even his fault. Oh, my God. It was their fault. But he had to, mm, y'all missed that. Because Moses was called to lead them, he had to wonder with the same people that caused the problems. What do you do when you're going through stuff behind somebody else's decision? Mm, mm, mm. See, some of you, my God, is fighting the wrong battles. And some of you are going through things, and it ain't about you. It's about the people you're connected to. And so you wonder why life is hard, because you're connected to the wrong people. You should have clipped them last year. They should have died in the Red Sea. They should have crossed over in 2018. They should have died in 20... And so you're frustrated because you're wandering around with people that you should have clipped and cut by now. You're wandering around with the same old excuses, same old problems, my God, because you ain't doing what God told you to do. Oh, I'm going to encourage this, though. Say, don't trip. It's just a detour. But Moses had to wonder in the desert 40 years with people that God called him. Moses got so fed up. He said, Pastor, he said, God, if it's going to be like this, kill me. This Bible. Read your Bible, you understand me. I won't be foreign to you. If you read your Bible, I, I won't be foreign. Moses was so frustrated. He said, God, if I got to go through this, kill me. 40 years of wondering because of complaining. Bad attitude. Heart not submitted. Trying to control God's plan and purpose in your life. And some of us not there. Some of us just scared of the calling that's on our life. So we got that Jonah syndrome. We're going to run. You're hurting yourself, baby. You're not hurting God. You may grieve God, but you're not going to hurt God. God is not going to cease being God because you want to wonder. Are you with me so far? Oh, my God. Look at your neighbor and say, stop wondering. Abraham. Just look at Abraham. 
was on a detour for 25 years. While he, while he was waiting, my God, for God to give him his earth, which is the son. Genesis 12, 1 through 4, the Lord has said to Abram, leave your native country, your relatives, and your father's family, and go to a land I will show you. I mean, this is where you get, you got to be able to uh, trust God when you can't trace God. Yeah. Yeah. Leave all the familiar. See, some of you, my God, can't move forward. Uh, some of you are wasting time because we sing about a God that we say we got faith in, but when God asks us to leave, we won't leave. When God says that season would hurt him, now be careful. I ain't talking about marriage and stuff like that. When God says that season with, with, with that person, that season over there is up, we hold on to the familiar. And so we start wondering. Uh, God gives you grace in season. Let me teach you now. I'm coming up now. Mom, God, God gives you grace in seasons. Uh, seasons. That, but when the grace is lifted, that will used to come easy. Now it feels hard. That, that, you, that what used to bless you now it don't bless you that what used to excite you my God don't excite you so you better pay it's good thank you Holy Ghost it's good to say okay God am I out of season have your grace lifted from this situation uh, you, uh, you listen to me uh, you can't hold on to people when God says time to let go uh, see Abraham was willing to trust God He's, and leave everything that you're familiar with leave everything that you know my God and let's, let's, let's go here and then he gave him a promise pastor he said when you do this he said everybody that bless you I'm going to bless and everybody that curse you I'm going to curse but if, if, if Moses didn't believe God I mean if Abraham didn't believe God he would have stayed with the familiar he would have stayed amongst his family that's my brother that's my sister that's my uncle I, I, that ain't godly if I leave them the devil is alive I'm going on with God you better ask somebody if God tell me to leave I'm leaving baby <laughs> oh my God because I got to get what God has for me but Abraham my God was willing to leave everything that he knew everything that was familiar to go with God. Yeah. Are you staying somewhere and you hindering what God wants to do because you won't let go of the familiar? And so again, you're wondering, not because it's a detour, because you're wondering out of disobedience. Yeah. See, I'm not talking about wondering and staying too long out of disobedience. The detours that I'm talking about is going to move you to your destiny. There's such thing as bad detours and healthy detours. And I don't want you to spiritualize talking about all things work together for the good. The devil is a lie. We take scripture out of context. See what I'm trying to say? We're going to tell ourselves that because that's how we, because we don't want to make a decision. So what we do, we'll misquote scripture out of context to say all things work together for the good to those love. That's true, my God, but don't take it out of context. And then allow you to stay in the familiar when God said leave. Mm. Are y'all with me so far? Let's look at the great Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul went on a three-year detour in the Arabian desert and Damascus, my God, waiting for his ministry to resume, to resume. Can you be patient? God called you. God has equipped you, but it ain't time to step forth yet. It ain't time to come forth yet. You're called, you're equipped, you're ready, but God said it ain't time. Ready means you have done the preparation spiritually, getting it done in the dark, growing in the dark. My God, just because you may be ready don't mean it's time. You know how many people have shipwrecked and lost ministries and lost things because they got ahead of God's timing? Ah, oh, you're ready, but it's the time. Just because you are qualified and just because, my God, you are ready, you are ready, but is it God's timing that you lease? Is it God's timing that you launch? Is it God's timing that you shift? See, many of us, my God, is shifting and moving and doing things out of, ooh, we create too many Ishmaels. We're getting ahead of the promises. We don't want to wait. It takes faith and patience. You might want to write that down. It takes faith and patience. Y'all heard me redundantly say that, to do God's will, to do God's will. If you get out of God's timing, you'll find yourself 40 years in the wilderness when you should have been seven years in freedom. Do the math. I'm 40 years stuck when I should have been seven years free. Yeah. Don't, something don't line up. Yeah. That's what happened when we're not growing in the dark. We're not crucifying the flesh. That's what happens, Pastor Chauncey, when we, we, list, we lend our ears. Jesus said, be careful who you lend your ear to. Be careful what you listen to. When we lend our ears, start getting around people that is, that's been bitten by the python, and now the python and bit you. But that's my friend. Well, God said, leave them because God already knew that they was going to contaminate you. So he was trying to cut you and clip you from that so you wouldn't have to go through that. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's my boo. 
That's my friend. And now you've been bitten because they got bit, and now they're biting on you. So he was a snake in Genesis. Now he's a dragon in Revelation. That means he's been eaten. He's been eaten. He's been eaten. But Paul had an encounter with God in the book of Acts, the ninth chapter. We understand that. And Galatians, write this down, 1, 15 through 18. He says, but even, Galatians 1, 15 through 18, but even before I was born, listen to this, church, God chose me. I can stop and close the book. You've been, cho- you know, uh, that, uh, think about the things you have experienced in life. Shirai, we got partners that didn't make it. Think about some of the things, some of you playboys, uh, that God healed you from that could have killed you. Think about, my God, that you can lift your hand because you ain't got, I'm trying to walk, see, look at, uh, mm. we got so much to be grateful for. You see, I'm trying to got so much, but, 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 but God, but God, watch, listen, let me read that to you again. I want to get this in your mind. God, cho- you've been chosen before the foundation. Uh, that's why what could have killed you didn't kill you. That's why you thought you were going to lose your mind, but Christ gave you his. Come on, somebody. Uh, I need you to understand that. I'm trying to build you up for your purpose, my God. You was chosen. Brandon, we had to go to them detours, but we were still chosen. Oh, I, oh my God, I'm trying not to get started, my God. You had to go through it, Brandy, but you were still chosen. Uh, uh, that portent didn't catch God by surprise, Brandy. God knew he was going to give you a portent, but he had to get you connected to somebody that had one first. <laughs> Let me show you how God's sovereignty worked. See, me and Janice connected way back in 2003 at Greenwood Christian Center before it became transformation. See what I say? But God knew that you was going to come to going over Christ Church. God knew that I was going to start a church. I didn't know I was going to start a church. I didn't know I was going to pastor, but he knew it. And so he said, I got to get her. I got to get her to the church, and I got to get her connected to Janice and the rest of the history. See, some of y'all missed that. See, some of y'all missed that. And watch this, watch this. I'm from the user, I'm from the user. And she don't mind. Many times she, she got bit by the python in the church and I almost left three or four times. And she'd have missed out on her part. And I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Mm. But watch this now. I'm trying to help you. But because God's voice through her pastor right here was louder than the python, she submitted. And now God's going to use her testimony to bless other people. Some of you are getting ahead of God. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I thank God no matter what, my God. God's voice. Notice I said God's voice. Oh, uh, my God, because I don't never want to be an idol to none of you. Come on, somebody. If God's voice through her pastor calls her three times to submit, and if she would have got ahead of God or she wouldn't listen to me, she wouldn't be part of the day. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Quit sleeping on me because I come up out of that struggle. Thank you. Paul said he was chosen. God chose me and called me by his marvelous grace. Then it pleased him to reveal his son. Don't you know it's an honor? Don't you know it's an honor? I thank God. I tell champ all the time. Ooh, my God, the things that I've been through. Don't you know it's an honor to be able to serve God? It's an honor. It's an honor, Barry, to be able to open up this Bible. It's an honor to be able to get on my knees and pray. It's an honor to be able to worship the king. And the Some of you have... Quit being ungrateful. It's an honor that God will reveal his son to me. And that I don't just know God behind my grandma, Callie West. I know God personally now. See, and that God will reveal his ways and not just his acts to me. See what I say? It's an honor. See, that's why I thank God for the, for the hunger and the thirst. My God, it's an honor. It's an honor to serve God. It's an honor to read my Bible. It's an honor to pastor. It's an honor to love y'all. It's an honor to do the things I do. Because it didn't have to turn out like this, church. Oh, my God, if you know. Look at your life. It didn't have to turn out like this, baby. You could be somewhere messed up, my God. But God. Mm, 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 I'm so full. He revealed his son so that I could proclaim the good news about Jesus to the Gentiles. When this happened, he said, watch this now. I'm moving. When this happened, when he revealed his son, when he recognized that he was chosen and he revealed his son, look what Paul said. He said, when this happened, he said, I did not rush out to consult with any human being, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to consult with those who were, some of them sometimes say, some trail, they say super apostles, or apostles, before I was. Instead, Paul said, look what he did. Instead, 
Paul, I went away into Arabia. And later, he said, I returned to the city of Damascus. Then three years later, I went to Jerusalem to get to know Peter. And he said, I stayed with him. That's Bible for 15 days. What am I trying to say? When God released the man of God to go to the Gentiles, instead of him rushing out because he's excited, you know, sometimes we get excited. We got zeal without knowledge. Yeah. Uh, we got a lot of passion like your pastor had early on that could, that could burn up something. If you, passion is good, but if it's uncontrolled, you're out of order. Yeah. I've been there. I'm telling y'all. See what I'm trying to say? But he, 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 when God reveals some things to him, he revealed his assignment, his calling to him, he went and got steel. He went off and spent three years getting trained, father training, father equipping. See what I'm trying to say? Then he came back and he connected with the apostles. I just going to give you 15 and I'm gone. Just give it 15 days and I got to get about my assignment. Are you wasting time? I'm going somewhere. Are you wasting time? What if God asks you to do that you keep self-sabotaging? Paul went away for three years, heard God's voice, came back, connected with the apostle for 15 days. The Bible said he pushed. Are you afraid to push? Are you letting fear dominate you? Are you letting fear control you? Well, then quit quoting Genesis 126 when the Bible says we, 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 are, uh, we are created in his image. We have dominion over the earth. Don't you know you have dominion over fear? I, I have a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. There is good fear and bad fear. Yeah. I taught y'all that. You know, I'm not talking, I'm talking about the fear that's paralyzing you and keeping you from filling your plan and your purpose in life. I'm talking about the fear that's causing you to wonder. My God. I'm talking about the fear, my God, that's not really connected to your detour. I'm talking about unhealthy stuff that's hindering you, my God, from reaching your destiny. By now, you should have been father. By now, you should have been father. By now, you should have been teachers. Now, but you still need to be taught. Come on. We still struggle with some things that by now, we should have been overcame by now. See what I'm trying to say? Don't let, look at your neighbor and say, don't let fear win. Mm. Just like these men in the scripture, God takes his own detours to help develop us. Now let's get to some positivity. Detours in God develops you. To bring it back to the context of the scripture, so let me get my seminary on. See, he said, Joseph, my God, God had this all planned. Some of us, my, I've heard it and I've been asked, God chose 17, your old boy. We always say, why I'm going through this? Why do I have to go through this? Why was I born to her? Why was I born to him? And why did my family treat me like this? Why? Joseph, if you know the story, didn't say none of that. He had absolutely no control over what was getting ready to happen in his life. But you have to understand that some of the detours that you are on and dealing with God is trying to train you and to develop, to develop you. So if you're not learning the lessons, you are staying in the wilderness longer than what you're supposed to stay in the wilderness. You are staying in famine longer than what you are supposed to stay in famine. You are dealing with unnecessary. Aha. Who is one thing to suffer for righteousness? The Bible says another thing to suffer for disobedience. Don't suffer because you're doing, you, we, because we are being disobedient. You see what I'm trying to say? And so, therefore, you and I got to understand that God is trying to develop you. That's why God will bring you to an untraditional pastor that's dealing with discipleship. Yeah. I remember when I first started the church, when I went and spoke at TBN, at the TBN place, they said, you mean to tell me you got people that come to church from 11 to 12.30 and then go to church from 1 to 3? He said, how do you get people, the interviewer, to stay in church that long? I said, because they're not listening to me preach, they're learning about them. They learning things about them. Here is, here, here is Sister Johnson. Here is Sister Johnson and come to the ministry and never ever been in church and around church all of her life and never knew that she had a purpose. For one year when we started this church over her, she cried every Sunday in every discipleship class for one year because the things that Sherman was learning and the things that she was being taught she, a grown woman, grown woman, I'm talking about no kid, I'm talking about grown woman, had never ever been exposed and said, you mean tell me I got a plan? That God got a purpose for me? That it's a reason why I exist? And she cried every, she's she sitting right there, I'm talking about every Sunday for one year. For one year. And so, and so, and so why am I saying that? Because see, God has brought many of you here, my God, because God, you used to doing church. You could tell people all about church, but you can't tell people all about the, watch this, not all about the kingdom. 
See, the Bible's about a king and his kingdom, baby. And you can tell everybody about church and, and what denomination you come from and, and who the porters, the greeters, and, and all of those stuff and all of those stuff that these traditional churches do. Uh, you know what I'm trying to say? But can you tell somebody about the king and his kingdom? See what I'm trying to say? Come on, somebody. So therefore, you come to a church where we're teaching you that you have a plan. Well, you get to know your name, Brandy. You get to find out your name, my God. You start one. You start understanding. Okay, I, I'm not just called to get up and get a job. You must know, take a vacation here and there. But God gave me dominion that I'm fearfully, wonderfully made. That I have a plan. That who in my life got to suffer what I remain the same? Oh my God, you start to understand. Whatever you don't confront won't change. Oh my God, don't get me started. You understand that anything left unattended turns to chaos. What are you leaving unattended that's turning to chaos? You start learning principles, my God, that did not teach you when you're up here jumping and shouting. And and the Lord said, and the Lord said, that ain't teaching me nothing. Teach me how to live what you just preached to me about. That's what discipleship do. I told the young pastor, oh my God. I told the pastor the other day, they called me. I said, we deal with the now what at going off for Christ Church. Oh, y'all to write that down. We deal with the now what? After I get saved, now, now you got to teach me how to deal with the now what? Teach me how to live, my God, what I just experienced. Teach me how to apply what I just experienced. We deal with the now what? And you know what? Most professing Christians don't want to deal with the now what? They'll come to church, but they don't want to put in no work to answer the now what? That's why only few are standing. We deal with the now what, baby? And so God bought you. What I'm trying to say with all the little whooping and hollering I just did, he brought you here to develop you. He brought you here to get you healthy, whole, and sound. He brought you here, my God, like many of you have, my God, to deal with that pain, to deal with them scars, to deal with that, oh my God. With, see, God renovates your mind. Go up into the attic and renovate your mind. God brought you here, my God, to make you all over, to give you a fresh start in your mind. Because whoever get the mind, get the life. Many of us, God, my God, we in church, but we don't have the mind of Christ. When you get the mind of Christ, it affects your lifestyle. Yeah. Then you move over to the Romans 12, 1 and 2. Then you start seeing the transformation. Yeah. Oh, my God. Not transformation in church, but transformation in society. Yeah. Yeah. Then you start, my God, men, 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 when you take and read your word and allow God to get your mind, then you start stepping in the office as a priest, prophet, and king of your home. Yeah. Yeah. Them is three different functions as priest, prophet, and kings of your home. Aren't you there? I, I, see, I took the liberty to let you know what, what the heartbeat of going over Christ is about because I have a lot of people here. We deal with the now what? So if you're going to post something on Facebook, say, I just learned that this church is about the now what? And people are going to ask you, what does that mean? Discipleship. <laughs> Transformation. Getting a new mind. Get, outlook determines outcome. Think about those principles. Whatever you don't confront, don't change. Many of us is trying not to confront things that you have to confront in order for them to change. Yeah. But here's the thing, as I move, you got to be led. Because some of us can confront stuff and ain't time to confront it. Yeah. And there's something that should, you should have got the results from, you don't get the results from. Because you got out of God's rhythm. Yeah. You got out of God's timing. That's why you got to be led. Yeah. That's why you got to be spending time with God. Point number two, let me move. So understand that detours are for a purpose to, of developing you. Who wants to be developed? Come on, y'all raise your hand. Who wants to be developed? Who wants to be developed? I know it's hard, but he's developing you. I know it's hard, but he's developing you. Look at your neighbor one more time and say, don't trip, it's just a detour. Joseph had to go through these things because God was developing him. I said Joseph had to go through these things because God was developing him. Because when God gave him, to keep it in context, when God gave him the dream at 17, told you he wasn't ready for it. When God revealed your purpose and your calling to you, now he got to put you in the fire. That's why you got to do like the psalmist said in 119, said, well, it was good for me that I was afflicted. My God, God's affliction come to purify you. Affliction in God will develop you. Affliction in God will mold you. Affliction in God will birth something in you that you didn't know was in you. You need some affliction. It was good for you to go through stuff because God is developing you. See, when you don't understand the ways of God, when you don't understand the sovereignty and the providence of God, something that God is using to develop you, mature you, and purify you, you will reject and mishandle. Then you didn't get the lesson. You didn't get the lesson. You didn't benefit from something that God sent to your life to benefit you. If you don't get all the way inside of going over Christ and really get connected, some of you have went through the vision maybe two or three times, but how much did the vision get in you? Yeah. Yeah. That's real. Discipleship one deals with the mind. 
If God don't change your mind, God won't change your life. Whoever get the mind, get the life. Baby, read Romans 6, 7, and 8. My God, you don't have to be dominated by sin. Oh, we're going to fall short, but you don't have to let sin dominate you. Don't let sin be your master. Oh, my God, the Bible says, my God, that they bound Jesus and they let him. Whatever has you bound is leading you, baby. Oh, my God, I said whatever has you bound is leading you. The Bible says they bound him. I don't know when he's getting ready to get crucified, then they let him. So whatever has you bound is leading you. That's really your God. Is your God money? Is it drugs? Sex, pride, nasty attitude, excuses, self-sabotaging, fear, disobedience, compromising. I could go on and on. Whatever has you bound is leading you. See what I'm trying to say? Even though we up here, but I'm bound. I'm glad you're up here, though, because God, if you get in God, he'll get you free. That takes me back to the now what? That's what discipleship do. It helps you get free. Thank you for coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Preparation. Number two, God uses detours for preparation. Often we are simply not ready to handle our destiny because we lack maturity. I couldn't handle 205 South Sheridan. I've been saved since April the 30th of 1995, over 20 plus years. I'm just now stepping into my destiny. But I've been on a lot of detours. I experienced a lot of stuff. I faithfully served my spiritual father, Bishop McIntosh. And then from there, went to a, 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 a church of the gospel and served, my God, uh, Pastor Humphreys, my God, as associate pastor. And then from there, we went over here and we shoveling sheep dung and taking care of this building like it was ours. Yeah. My God, and God said, okay, now it's time. Yeah. I looked at that church seven months ago, me and Pastor Dean, yeah. but it wasn't time. Yeah. It wasn't time. I could have pulled the trigger then seven months ago, right. but it wasn't time. If I was trying to make a statement, want everybody to see, okay, this is going on. If I wanted to say, if I wanted that flesh, Pastor Melvin, a flesh, trying to prove something to somebody else, I could have did it seven months ago. But see, God wouldn't have blessed it like he has blessed it now. See, I'm in old, I, I don't care what motive is right. Motive is right. And that's why y'all seen what y'all seen. That's why they left what they left. And that's why they gave what they gave. Because it was God's time. And the blessing of the Lord make it rich. And it has no sorrow. Everybody might not understand. That's too bad. I'm going on with God, baby. I said, I'm going on with God. If you want to stay here in Egypt, stay. I'm going on to promised land, baby. Some people, Pastor Chauncey, don't understand the blessings of the Lord because they're used to captivity and they're used to mediocrity. Some people want to stay in prison because you can manage prison. You can manage chaos. Everybody, see, it's easy to manage chaos. It's easy to manage the familiar. But when you're going with God and you're going to fulfill your purpose and, your, and God's plan for your life, you ain't going to be able to manage it. If your dream is something that you can manage, then it didn't come from God. Because you can't manage God's dream. You can't fund God's dream. You can't provide the resources for God's dream. You can't manage God's blessings. You can't control God's blessings. You might can control man's blessings, but you can't control God's blessings. Preparation. A lot of detours led me to where we at today. We are simply not ready to handle the destiny because we lack maturity. Hebrews, write this down, 6 and 1. Let us stop going over the basic teachings about Christ again and again. Let us go on instead to become mature, y'all, in our understanding. If you're going to read the Bible, then become, let the word of God develop you. Yeah. Don't you know how many people is pregnant with the word and they, don't, they, they act like a newborn? Get offended? Bad attitudes, pastor? I'm serious, church. The Bible says, you got that, I'm, just, I'm reading the scripture. It, it says, it says uh, let us go on and become mature. That means perfect. You know what? For perfect is mature. You should be growing in your knowledge. You should be growing in your understanding. When you read the Bible, it's to develop you. It's to reveal to you the king and his kingdom. As I taught y'all, it teaches you how to do business in God's kingdom. My God, the same stuff, my God, you should be struggling with it that you were struggling with in 2015 and 2016. You By now, you should be growing up, my God. A newborn baby don't always stay a newborn baby. Sooner or later, that baby got to start crawling, walking, and moving around, and driving, and everything else, having kids and so forth. Come on, somebody. When I look at my daughter sitting right there, my grandson, my God, I remember when she was jumping around in her baby bed with her finger in her mouth. My God, I'm up under the bed and she's trying to find me with them big old eyes and stuff. But now look at her. She's a grown woman with her, grand, with her own woman with my grandchildren. Are you growing up in the things of God? Yeah. Are you growing up in the things of God? We shouldn't be keep going back over elementary truths. We shouldn't be repenting over the same stuff week after week. 
Come on, church. That's what the Bible's talking about. And God sends us on detours. Let me, let me go back to the word. He sent you and I, I and you on detours because we're not ready for our destiny. Yeah. That's what he had to do to Joseph. Joseph was 17. He wasn't ready. He wasn't ready. Just because of our danger don't mean you're ready. Just because I let you preach don't mean you're ready. And y'all know I'm not intimidated of none of y'all. I let I'll do it. Come on. I want you to, because when you do what you call to do, it makes my life much easier. I ain't preached, I ain't preaching the last month, have on Wednesday, you know, and won't preach next Wednesday, this Wednesday. I'm good. I get to instead of have to. Why? Because I train up people because I understand discipleship. Train up people. Raise up people. I get to preach, Pastor. I don't have to preach. I'm a young man of God to understand the principle of what Jesus told and said to told the church to do, train and make disciples. That's what I do. God reveals to Joseph details of his destiny, but he's not mature enough to handle them. God gives Joseph two dreams about his future, telling him, telling him that he would rule over his brothers. That's one dream, father and mother. When he was only 17 years old, Joseph, though, watch this, unwisely tells his brothers and his parents about his dreams. Now, we can say that's unfair. You talking about my mom and daddy? You talking about my brothers? I should be able to share stuff with them. That's the natural brothers. Let me put it on the church now. I should be able to talk to my sister, and she should be able to handle Accountability goes up and never goes down. So, my God, some of you are offended because you shared something with a sister or brother in the church that couldn't handle what you shared. See, we gather people around us. (laughs) So, if I share something with a newborn baby that just got saved last week about something that may be going on at the highest level in the church, I just ruined her conscience. And so now I became a stumbling block that quick. Now, now the hand of God is coming. Yeah. And see, some of us have shared dreams and visions and stuff mm-hmm. with people that couldn't handle. Uh-oh, let me get back to the word. That could not handle, could not handle. Watch this. That could not handle what you dropped on them. Again, that's why it's so critical to be led. That's why the Bible says we got to put to death the deeds of the flesh by way of the spirit. Church, you got to grow up, man. Yeah. 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 You got to read your Bible. You got to learn the ways of God and not just the acts of God. The acts of God are some of the things that Moses did with the ten plagues and so forth. You know what I'm saying? Acts, acts. My God, learn his ways. When you know God's way, you be like, God wouldn't do that. He ain't going to say that. He can't do that. That's why we got to, con- that's why, no, watch this now. That's why we constantly, we, I'm not talking about y'all, we got to constantly be crucifying our flesh. Don't you know most of our battles is right? Everybody do like this. Do like this. When, when, let me move, when God placed Adam in the physical garden, that was in the Old Testament, the beginning of time. Guess what your garden is today? You have to take care of your garden. Whatever's growing in your garden is your fault. Whatever you're allowing to manifest, whatever fruit that you're allowing to manifest, it ain't nobody's fault. I don't care what they've done, it's your fault. Because you control what grows in your garden. You control what's planted in your garden, your mind. See what I'm trying to say? And so therefore, preparation. And God reveals things to you. But Joseph shared his dream unwisely with his family. You know, and Joseph's journey, let me move into slavery, allowed him to become acquainted. See, God is strategic. Let me go spiritual now. God is very strategic. Because we know that Joseph was sold. To bring it up, and my God, but he was sold, my God, into slavery, which allowed him to become acquainted with the Egyptian, watch this, culture, government, and language, because God knew he was putting them in place. He had to be in a position where he can relate to the people. And so God had to send him through these detours. He had to send him through these things, Brandy, because he had to make sure he trained him and developed him for his office. He was 17 with a dream, but he wasn't ready for the office. He wasn't ready to be second in command of the throne. And so he had to learn some things. He had to learn the culture. He had to learn the government. He had to learn the language of the people that he was getting ready to rule. Uh, Do you know how to lead the people that God has placed you over? Mm, mm, mm. God allowed Joseph to be falsely accused. Watch this. Let's talk about some detours. Falsely accused 
and in prison in order to develop his character and form him into a better leader. Even though God reveals Joseph's destiny, he also takes him on many detours in order to mature him for his reign over Egypt. Although each of, the role, each of our roles, church, look different, God takes his own detours to prepare us for the things that he has in store for our future. Let me give you some of this. In Genesis 39, verses 3 and 4, Joseph became Potiphar's personal attendant. Now, now watch this now. Personal attendant. His armor bar, cup bar. He put him in charge, not cup bar, put him in uh, attendant, put him in charge of his entire household and everything he owned. Now, here it is. This young man was sold, thrown in the pit, sold to the Midianites. Then he was sold again. He was sold twice. He's being faithful in part of his house. He ain't bothering nobody. He's being found faithful. Working, y'all. Stay with me, church. This is good, man. He's found faithful. See, don't you know you could be doing God's will? You could be in order. And this God, my God, you could be in order. Listen to me. Oh, Lord, I want to help the people, God. You could be doing everything right. You could be shoveling sheep, though. You could be loving. You could be forgiving. Like, forgiving people like Joseph did. Potiphar's wife. Looked at him. The Bible says that Joseph was handsome like your pastor. <laughs> and she looked at him and she began, come on, she, she started, I verbiage, lusting after the man of God. Trying to get him to, yeah. see what I'm trying to say? Yeah, yeah. And so he went from being stripped, sold into, thrown into a pit, sold twice, He's serving faithfully. Keep in mind, he's in a pit, not because of some or disobedience. His brothers also throw him in there out of hate and jealousy. Right. See what I'm trying to say? And now he's serving in the house. Detours. He ain't doing nothing. He ain't looking at her lustfully. He ain't got that spirit on him. He ain't got no soul ties. He ain't got none of that stuff. And now all of a sudden he found himself being accused of rape. Then from there... Detours, he gone to prison. In a pit, sold twice, accused of rape. Now I'm in prison. This is what I love about the story. But the Bible says that the Lord was with Joseph. <laughs> Everything along the way, pleasure, the Lord was with Joseph. Look at your David said, the Lord was with me. Look at, come on. Okay. Watch this. Before long, before long, he's in prison. But before long, in prison, oh my God, uh, the warden put Joseph in charge of all the other prisoners and everything, and over everything that happened in the prison. So I'm sold, I'm in prison, accused of rape falsely. But while I'm there, because the Lord was with me, I become the warden's right hand man. So now I'm getting all the privileges. See, I'm trying to detour us, but the Lord was with Joseph, I'm trying to get, don't miss the revelation, y'all. But the law was with Joseph in prison. Come on, the law was with Joseph. Now I'm second in command in prison to the warden. He put me over everything. I'm good. I'm good. Watch this. I'm here in prison, and I didn't do anything to deserve it. I'm here in prison. And Joseph said, when he prophesied that the dream would come and he would be restored and he said when you get there remember me but the Bible says the young cupbearer forgot all about Joseph two years have passed Joseph said I'm in prison I didn't do nothing see some of you you ain't done nothing some of you is walking around in shame and guilt but it ain't really your fault you have accepted somebody else's wounds and you have let somebody else put their brokenness on you and so you walking around <laughs> carrying stuff that you shouldn't be carrying. Some of us can't move forward because we feel if we leave, if we move forward, then it's going to make them feel bad. Or it's going to make them not like me. See, some of you two people focus instead of God focus. You see what I'm trying to say? But, but, but Joseph was thrown in prison. He didn't do nothing to deserve it. And while he's in prison, the king has a dream. And then the young man of God said, I'm, today I'm reminded, 
watch this, of my failure, he told Pharaoh about Joseph. Because Pharaoh had a dream, and he called for everybody. Could nobody interpret the dream? And so the young man that, Pharaoh, that Joseph prophesied that would be restored back to his rightful place said, oh, today, timing. Write down the word timing. Woo, write it down. Write it down. Boy, this is teaching. See, even though he forgot about him, Pastor, for two years, Pastor Terry, but it wasn't time for Joseph to be delivered from prison. I made parole in 1996, and the governor wouldn't sign it. I made parole in 1997. I'm an old convict. And the governor wouldn't sign it. See, I was worried about, y'all stay with me because I'm with the sermon. I was worried about trying to get out of prison because the parole board says yes, but you can't get out of prison unless the governor sign it. And so I was worried about trying to get out of prison. Even though I made it, I did everything. I was a model citizen, a model uh, uh, inmate, as they would say. And the parole board says yes, but the governor... How many know that the Bible says the heart of a king is in the hand of the Lord? And so God said, you know what? What I'm going to do, I'm going to encourage you two years in a row to keep you excited. So in 97, when he said no, I said, I'm going to go ahead and finish. I'm good. But see, God had it all planned. He had it all planned. That he was, I had, in order for me to get my pardon, you can't get a pardon unless you are fully discharged. You can't have be on probation, parole. You can't have fines, none of stuff. I had to, so I had to be, I had to finish my time because God knew, my God, that he was going to give me a pardon. So here's the same governor that denied me in 96 and 97, ended up giving me a full pardon in 2000. Yeah, 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 yeah. See what I'm trying to say? Watch this. Why am I saying that? Why am I saying that? Because even though in 96, the, the role boy, Dirty Dad, says he's ready, God said, I ain't through with you. I know for a fact, I know this, my God, if God would have let me out of 96, I probably wouldn't still be with God. Because I reminded, God reminded me, amen, God reminded me when I, February 10th, 1995, when they said, Lawrence Peoples, I now sentenced you to 13 years of the Department of Correction. And I told God, whatever you do, God, don't let me out of prison the same way I came in. Game, banger, drug, and so forth. That's, so God reminded me, you told me not to let you out until... I, tell my God, knew you was ready. See, see, what am I trying to say? God is a forward thinker. See, God knew that he was going to do. He knew that some of y'all was going to need me, the God that's in me, my God, because your deliverance, your healing, and so much was tied up inside of me. And so God said, I got to protect him. I ain't got no more time. His time is up. His time of being in the streets is up. His time of being a drug addict and a gangster is up, my God. The time is now. But I wanted to get out, but it wasn't time. Joseph wanted to get out of prison, but it wasn't time. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. And see, oh, 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 here I go, here I go. Stay with me. See, 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 if we didn't just get out of prison, he'd have went back. Ooh, pastor. If he didn't get out of prison, Joseph would have just went back to his normal routine. But see, now, ooh, my God, when you get the king's attention... Now the king had a dream. Uh, I ain't talking about a subject. I ain't talking about the king, the highest order. Uh, now he has need of Joseph. So the man said, I'm reminded of this guy. The king says, send for him. Y'all need to stay with me, church. And the Bible says that Joseph cleaned up himself. He shaved and changed clothes. What am I saying symbolically? You can't just come any kind of way. You can come and say, God, forgive me. But after you ask God to forgive you, now you got to allow God to clean you up. Some people just come off in the house of the Lord and they just like, entertain me. I'm here, you all be glad I'm here. I gave $2, y'all be glad I gave it. The devil is allowed you to take your $2, there's a whole lot of place you can go, but you don't need to be here. Oh, that sounds powerful, but it's not powerful. I'm trying to help you. I just taught you a cold-blooded principle. That the Bible says that Joseph cleaned himself up. Joseph had enough respect for the king. See, some of us are not getting the results from God because we don't honor God. The church has lost its reverence for God. Uh, we, we, we treat God and we, and we treat the house of the Lord and we treat the people of God any kind of way. We have no respect for the people yeah. of God. We have no respect for the thing. We see trash and stuff on it. We won't pick it up. No, no. Joseph understood I'm coming before the king. Yeah. That this man has the authority and the power. To deliver me from this physical bondage of prison. Yeah. I'm going to clean myself up. Yeah. I'm going to shave. Because I know I'm going to see the king. When you come into the house of the Lord, you're coming to, to meet with the king. You ain't coming to meet with me. Yeah. When you yeah. open up your Bible, my God, you're getting the very words from the throne of heaven. Yeah. That ain't just no book. Yeah. That ain't just no book. Y'all better listen yeah. to me. I'm trying to yeah, teach y'all. 
and you open up the very word of God. Uh, the Bible says the word of God has the power to deliver you and set you free. You trying to get free and deliver from all this old stuff? My God, I promise you, my God, I went to five drug treatment centers and none of that could deliver me. But when I picked up that Bible and called on the name of Jesus, I've been set free for 23 plus years. Oh, my God. You got to learn how to come before the king, baby. I said you got to learn how to come before the king. Quit just coming and giving God any type of worship. Some of you just go through the motions. I'm not trying to beat nobody up. I'm just trying to help you. You just go through the motions, my God. You got to have an expectation. You got to have an expectancy. God, I need you, God. I honor you, God. I love you, God. I worship you, God. I need you, God. Do you need God? God been too good to you for you to just give God anything. God been too good to you and I. He's the king. Jesus you love me enough to reveal your son to me you love me enough to save my soul you love me enough to deliver me from drugs and alcohol you restored my family you gave me my respect back thank you Jesus you're coming before the king you love me enough to reveal your son I'm like Pastor Paul you chose me I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. The Bible says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. I know they mishandled you. I know some of you been dropped like my favorite chef. Oh my God, it's a detour. You had to go through it because you got a purpose and a calling on your life. You got to be able to be touched by other people's infirmity. Some of the stuff you've been through, you have to go through it because the people that God bring to your life, you got to help them get free from it. Joseph, my God, was 17, and it didn't seem right. When you read the story, it didn't seem right. God, why would you allow this young boy to go through all this? He ain't done nothing. Purpose. Purpose would disrupt your life. Purpose would destroy everything that you're familiar with. Purpose would disrupt the marriage and everything when you're operating in purpose. Purpose would disrupt everything. The plan God has for you will disrupt the marriage. The plan God has will put the marriage yeah, back together. Yeah, it will yeah, restore yeah, the relationship yeah, yeah, between yeah, father yeah, and yeah, daughter. Yeah, yeah. The plan of God. I'm trying to teach y'all. I'm trying to teach y'all. Bring God to you and bring you to the word. Joseph 17 and going through hell. And it ain't his fault. Joseph can step in the office and say, now all things is working together for the good to those that love God. Mm. Let me give you number three and I'm done. Some detours seem to be closed roads. When they said yes and the governor said no, that felt like a closed road. But now I understand, told you the pain and the purpose for that. When you understand, I'm redundant, the sovereignty and the purpose and plan of God for your life. We might not understand it all, but just trust God. Just walk with God, church. Don't trip, it's just a detour. But what you and I got to understand is we're growing along the way. You got to understand what's God and what's not God. I don't want you suffering and going through stuff and you telling yourself it's just a detour. No, it's disobedience. Don't stay in a detour out of disobedience. Don't take the word out of contact and say, well, like Pastor said, it's just a detour. Now make sure, my God, make sure it ain't disobedience that's causing you to go through a detour. Joseph went through a detour not out of disobedience, out of the will, the sovereignty of God. Yeah, yeah. There's a difference. Are y'all listening to me? Number three, every road that seemed closed, God got a plan for it. Joseph's brothers began to hate him more for telling him about his dream. They resented him from trying to make himself look better than everyone else. Watch this, y'all. But he really wasn't trying to make himself past the chance he looked better. He was just sharing his dream. That's right. A young 17-year-old boy just excited, Lisa. I'm finna share this with my brothers. I'm finna share this with my father. Right. So, so how was he trying to make himself? See, that's what I'm saying. People's perception is cold-blooded. Uh, see, God just gave that to me. Here it is. This man just keeping it on a this young baby. That's what he is, Pastor Hunter. He, he just sharing his dream uh, with the people that he feel like he should share it with. And, and they tell me, you trying to make yourself better than me. Be careful hanging around people that's not going to celebrate your success. Clip, 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 clip. God just gave it to me. 
They resented him. As I said, they did not understand his dream. Now watch this, y'all. This is going to pick you up. His own brothers did not. His own, even his mama, father, they did not understand his dream. Watch this. Because they had not been prepared for their part. God had to prepare his family for their part in his destiny. God had to prepare Antoinette, his family, for his destiny. When they don't understand their part in their destiny, they will mishandle. They will get jealous. They will get envy. What am I trying to say? Be patient with the people because God is preparing them, preparing, preparing their part for your destiny. Everybody ain't prepared to handle you. Everybody ain't prepared to go into the future with you. So you got to allow God to keep his hands on them. But then you got to be sensitive enough and discerning enough to say, okay, God, is she or he supposed to go into my destiny? Everybody ain't supposed to go. I know you love them. I know you love them. I know you love them, it, or whatever. But everybody ain't supposed to go. This is why we got to be fasting and praying, baby. Oh, my God, because we can't take nobody into our destiny. ain't supposed to go. And now we weight it down. When the Bible says lay aside every weight and every sin that do so easily beset you. But see, the people, my God, his brothers and family, my God, envied him because they weren't prepared for their point. There's people that God has got around you. God is getting prepared for their point. That's why it takes patience. It takes patience. That's why you can't faint not. Keep praying. Yeah. Keep lifting yeah. up the Lord. Yeah. He's working. Yes. On everything that concerns you, little mama, yeah. he's working. Yeah. All that, he's working. He's working yeah. on mama and everybody. Yeah. Yeah. He's getting everybody prepared for the destiny. Oh, he's getting prepared. He's getting prepared for the destiny. People will criticize what they don't understand because they're not prepared for it. That's encouraging to me. To me. Yes. Yes. Joseph destiny, my God. My God. Let's look at his destiny as I close. Joseph's brothers picked him up and threw him into an empty pit, detour, with no water. Joseph is falsely accused of raping his master's wife, detour. Joseph spent two years in prison before interpreting Pharaoh's dream, detour. Even though, my God, detours are, who are difficult, it seems as though life is getting worse, they are really a part of God's design to prepare you for your future. Yeah. When Joseph said, Jacob said, get ready, and I will send you to them. And young Joseph at 17 said, I'm ready to go. He was ready to move towards destiny. He was ready to embrace detours. And what I love about the story, Joseph never complained. He never said, God, why me? He never walked in unforgiveness towards his brothers. When you read out the story, he reached his destiny through many trials and tribulations. And what's different about Joseph and you and I is Joseph never done nothing wrong. Joseph stayed in order. And the Bible says he took his rightful position of second in command, Pastor. From 17, watch this, y'all. From 17 to 30 years old, he went through trial after trial after trial after trial after trial. But he made it to his destiny. Many detours. And while he was going through all of his detours, God was preparing his family for when he got to his spot. And he was able to forgive, embrace, and bless. The dream was fulfilled, y'all. But it was fulfilled through detours. Trials, wrongly accused, 
mishandled. He was dropped, left in prison. He never quit. He never stopped praying. He stayed in love with God with every head bowed. Every head bowed. If you are here this afternoon and you don't know Christ and this message through Christ spoke to you in any capacity and you are ready to give your life to Christ or if you are here and you have allowed the detours of life to cause you to faint, quit, and give up to some capacity even though you are physically hurt physically hurt but your heart ain't with the king and his kingdom and you're ready because you understand now that the detours are part of the destiny if that's you please raise your hand if you want to be restored if you want to come back if you've learned that detours is part of it if you, are been, if you have been pushed away if you have walked away because you didn't understand the detours. You didn't understand why they lied on you, why they talked on you, talked about you, or why they throwed you into a pit, and why they said what they said, and why people turned their back on you, why you lose your job, why they promote that person. See, I know Spirit of God is speaking, but will you be real enough to say, God, Pastor, that's me. I'm wounded because I didn't understand the detours, but I'm better now because of what the Spirit of God said to you. If that's you, come to the front. Come to the front. Let us pray. Amen. 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 Just come. Just come. Now, I know we don't ever pump, prime, and beg, but I'm no. If you have been bitten, you've allowed people to contaminate your lynch and her, you've lost your passion, uh, and you need, you know, you just need to get back in God. You got a better understanding that God has a plan and a purpose for you, and you're ready to pursue that. You're ready to possess that. If you need any form, watch this, y'all, any form of deliverance. Remember, deliverance is not just drugs and alcohol. Any form of deliverance. Today is your day. Today is your day. What do you need from the Lord? Have you been raped? Come. Have you been dropped? Come. Your prison may not be a physical prison like I was in, but you in prison in your mind. You ought to be at the altar. There's more people that's in prison in their mind than it is in the penitentiary. So if you are in prison in your wounds, in your heart, in your heart, you ought to be at the altar. God wants to deliver you. If you're struggling with decisions, if you're struggling uh, in the home, if you're struggling, whatever it is, come. Y'all know sometimes I got the labor, but I will until you get where you're supposed to be because I care about your soul. If you have lost focus, you need to refocus. If you got unforgiveness in your heart, you should be here. If you're angry, you should be here. <laughs> God has room at the table for you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. They're coming. I can truly wait, relate to Joseph. Joseph is a prototype, Pastor Chauncey, of Jesus in the New Testament. I didn't get time to work it like the Spirit of God, like I could have worked it, my God, because of time. But if you, per if you parallel Joseph and, and you look at some of the things that Jesus went through, Jesus relied on. Jesus was betrayed. <laughs> Jesus was misunderstood. His prophecies was taken out of context. <laughs> uh, he was crucified. He was beaten. He was lied on. You know what I'm saying? Uh, all that type of stuff. Joseph went through the same thing, and Jesus did too. Yeah, 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 yeah. What do you need today? What do you need today? Pastor Chauncey, I'm going to ask your wife, will she please come in? I'm going to have her pray. Before I release her, this is your opportunity. Some of you may need to stand in the gap for a loved one that's not here. You should be at the altar. 
I'm waiting. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Truth be told, this message speaks to everyone in this sanctuary. Should have been up here. Why you heard before you I released the woman of God to pray, you should be praying for yourself. How do you know that she can get a prayer through? <laughs> oh, I teach you right, church. You better learn how to intercede for yourself. Instead of always needing somebody else to do it for you. Mm. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I'm waiting. Resentment, bitterness. Amen. Amen. They come. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Today is salvation, woman of God. Your life will never be the same if you continue to stay committed. If you continue to allow God to separate you from the familiar, the familiar consists of people, places, and things. Clip. He has a plan and a purpose. Everything you've been through, God will use it if you let him. There's no coincidence that you have come to this church like you have. Because everything that you need is inside of this church. Giving God all the glory. Stay faithful. Your season is changing for the good. Your detours will work for the better. I promise you. Everybody at the altar, lift your hands as I get ready to turn it over to the one mother of God. We're going to recommit ourselves back to covenant because God is a God of covenant. You have to get connected to the vine in order for God to do what he needs to do in your life. You can't come to an altar call, my God, and not be connected to the God who has all the tools that you need. You have to be properly connected church to the person that you are asking to do something in your life and so if you are not properly connected and submitted and your sins have not been forgiven then you won't have to ask God to forgive you as the woman of God get ready to lead all of us into the sinner's prayer and then pray for our healing and our deliverance because all of us need it come on we working our way up we working our way up come on push y'all not praying y'all not praying y'all not praying come on y'all not praying Come on, everybody at the altar before I hand over the mic. Come on. Come on, because the woman of God know how to pray, so we're going to pray. Stretch, 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 stretch your faith. Even give your pain, give your pain, give your frustration to God. Oh, give your pain and give your frustration to God. Oh, give your disappointments and your heartaches. Give all your fears and all that stuff over. Say, God, it's me. Save me. Deliver me. Heal me. Oh, my God. Come on back to the Father. He's waiting. He's waiting. He's waiting. He's waiting. Go ahead and turn the mic on for me, son. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Father, we thank you today for a divine detour. Father, we thank you for a divine detour and divine even as you have wooed us to the altar today. You have wooed us in this place and you have drawn us, Lord, with your cords of loving kindness, Lord, and we come before you. We come before you, Lord, and we say we're coming before our God. For those of you saying, Lord, I'm coming back to you, Father, that's the prayer we're praying, Lord, I give my life to you. Lord, I give my heart to you. Lord, I'm coming to you and I say, come into my heart. Come into my life. And I turn away. That's our prayer. We say, Lord, we turn away from that which have separated us from you. And we say, Jesus, come into my life. Today I make you not just 
us Savior, but Lord, save us. Come on, that's the prayer, Lord, save me. For those of you, if you don't know Jesus as Lord, our cry today is, Lord, save me. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, he will save us. And I say today, Father, and even as you come, we thank you now for your spirit. That would even break chains now for those who come to the altar to lead different. The word of God says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And the spirit of the living God is in this place. So Father, we thank you for a divine detour and a divine encounter to break yokes. Father, we thank you for every addiction being broken today in the name of Jesus. We say today we break, Father God, generational slavery to addictions. Generational slavery, Father God. Every iniquitous pattern, Father, it breaks today in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you, oh God, that whom the Son has set free is free indeed. We lose the spirit of freedom and we break the spirit of slavery. We come against the spirit of slavery, every chain and every yoke and every fetter. Father, we say today is broken in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, come on. Those of you praying the Holy Ghost, praying the Holy Ghost. Come on, we thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you right now for every spiritual blindness. We come against spiritual blindness. We command every scale to fall right now. Spiritual deafness. We come against the assignment where we will not be able to hear properly. Come on, we break it now. We break that assignment of being mute, not being able to speak our hearts, but we break that generational assignment in Jesus name. Father, I say today we have eyes to see and ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. God, open up our eyes today. Come on, we thank you, God, for your blood right now. Father, we thank you for the blood of Jesus. We thank you for the blood of Jesus. Father, we apply the blood right now over our souls. We apply the blood over this house. Come on, we decree and declare that this is holy ground. Father, we thank you for every shackle being broken. Father, we thank you, oh God, for your power and your anointing. We say it's your anointing, God. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, the anointing is here to destroy yokes. Father, I even saw earlier as the man of God was ministering, I saw an open portal over this house. And I saw a clear stream of water coming through. And the Lord says it's a clear stream. There's clear, there's a pure word coming out. Listen, the water signifies the spirit of the living God. And God is just loosing through this house. And it's going to go through this city. It's a pureness. It's a pure word. It's a pure stream. And God is going to begin to cause like a tsunami. And it's going to be like a tsunami of deliverance and breakthrough. Not only in your lives, not only in this house, but in the city. But the city needs what's in this house. The city needs what's in this house. Oklahoma needs a pure stream. Oklahoma needs a pure stream. So we don't only cry out for ourselves, we cry out for our city. Deliverance, God, for our city. A move of God for our city, oh God. We're crying out for salvation and deliverance, not only for us, but for our neighbors and our communities. Father, we say today is a day of breakthrough. Today, God, there is a shift, and we 
recognize the divine detour. We recognize, God, that there has been a detour in our lives for destiny and for purpose. For destiny and for purpose. Many of you have been called to this house for such a time as this. For preparation and to be equipped in the kingdom. And the Lord is saying, haven't I prepared you? Haven't I prepared your heart? Am I not feeding you meat, says the Lord? Am I not feeding you meat? For surely I've called some of you to stand strong in my kingdom. And many have been second guessing and have been wondering, should I stand and do this and should I do this? But the Lord says, stand up strong and hear the voice of the commander. He says, my sheep hear my voice and the voice of a stranger they will not follow. You do hear the voice of the Lord and you have been trained in this house for God has set a general in this house. And let me tell you, in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, it says, how could they hear the sound if the flute is not clear, if the bugle is not clear, if the trumpet is not clear? The Lord says there's a pure stream and there's a clarity of word in this house. And with the word, I see this house just growing and growing. Listen, and it's not just a number. It's in spirit. It's the fatness, listen, of the anointing, listen, that destroys the yoke. And there's a growth coming in this house. There is a spiritual growth and a spiritual stamina that's coming. Even the youth, the youth. Come on, there's a growth coming. Your pastors have been pioneering and teaching. And let me tell you, some of you have been catching it by the Spirit. And you say, Pastor, I got it. Pastor, I got it. For those of you who got it, it's time. It's not going it's not gonna be time. It is time. You've already turned a corner. You're not gonna turn a corner. This house has already turned a corner. And I see you guys in full momentum like an army like an army listen and there's others in the state there's others in the state that will hear the sound that will be herald from this house they will hear the sound and the lord says listen it's because of the humility that's upon this house and upon your leaders there is such a humility to allow the king to speak in this house. There is such a humility that God is Lord and there is no flesh. And because of it, that's when I saw the, the portal and I saw the clear water. God is looking for houses that would have a pure stream that would allow the Lord to come through. And he found it in this house. You are to band together. You are to band together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you see someone else that's weak, you pray for them. When you see someone struggling, you pray for them. Listen, pray for your leaders. Pray for your leaders. I know you pray for your leaders, but I'm going to say again, pray for your leaders. They're on the front line. And the enemy doesn't like what's taking place here. Because there's more for your apostle to lead besides this group. There's more in this city and in the state that's going to hear the sound and it's not a natural sound it's a sound in the spirit that's being heralded from this place and everyone at this altar today carry a part of the sound and it's within you it's within you Just pray in the spirit just for a bit. Just pray in the spirit. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus. You will be done. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost just for a bit. Just seeing what God is doing in this place. Hallelujah. 
Aleluya. Yemando so kuchema na ziama. Aleluya. Father God, we receive the prophetic word from the woman of God, Lord Jesus. We receive the accuracy, Father God, of that word that bear witness with my spirit, Father God. Thank you, Father God, that you chose a remnant. It's time. Continue to develop us spiritually continue to mature us spiritually help us to become fat spiritually so that we can advance your kingdom Father God we thank you for all that you're doing we thank you for everyone that has come to the altar Father God to reconnect Father God back to the vine we thank you Father God for lasting fruit that remains we thank you Father God for strength for the journey thank you for increased discernment oh my God we thank you as the woman of God said for divine detours thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord Lord while we're here in your presence we lay down everything we submit everything. everything we let go everything, everything Father God. Mm. That we misunderstood. There was divine detours everything. to lead us to our destiny. Every pain, every mistake, all shame, all guilt, all unforgiveness, all bitterness. Mm. None of that stuff Joseph had. And he reached his destiny. So Father God, while we remain, Father God, we repent. We repent. Yeah, 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 yeah. Godly sorrow produces godly yeah, transformation. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're not just going to ask you to forgive us, Father God. Change our mind about the situation. Change our passion and our affections about the situation, Father God. It has held us in prison for so many years, Lord. Cut it away. Do a circumcision in our mind. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that clear water. Thank you for that pure sound. Mm. Thank you. Thank you that we are learning your ways. Thank you. We honor you, Lord. We'll be careful, Lord, not to mishandle your Shekinah glory. We will stay small in our eyes, Father God. Greater is the God that lives in us. We exist to advance your kingdom. We exist to bring honor to your kingdom. We exist to seek and save that which is lost. We exist, Father God, to make disciples, to sit back and out into society, Lord, to affect the other subjects. Lord, I'm calling in subjects that's connected to this work that has not made their way here yet. That is on their way. Yes. You are king and we are subjects in your kingdom. We make room, Father God, for a new wave. For you to add to that which you have already established. We thank you, Father God, that there is no competition in all our sheep and all of Amongst none of us. We just got an eternal yes that's pure. We just want what you want. Yes, Lord. Somebody say yes, Lord. 
We honor you in Jesus' name we pray. Come on and say amen. Come on, let's give God a hand praise. Come on. Mm.